Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It's almost the end of a busy day. It was CD Sunday today. It was the first gardening event of the year. And I did a talk about the community orchards, the First Nations garden, the community garden, and the edible forest. Just showing people the progress of the, the site from the very beginning, breaking ground, to its present state, and explaining all the volunteer opportunities there are in the orchard. It was a really sunny day today. The sun was just pouring in the windows. The plants are really liking that late winter sun. It's getting stronger every day and the plants are looking greener and more healthy as the dark days of winter slowly go away. I'm going to start today's video with a bit of a sad story. My Kapok forest, I had it in the greenhouse and I had the heat on in the greenhouse even though the temperatures outside were really cold and sometimes slightly below zero. The roof was getting done in the plant room here, so I, I couldn't have my trees indoors. So I did my best to keep them alive in the greenhouse outside until the plant room roof was done. And most of the trees did really well. However, there's one species that didn't, and that was my Kapok trees. Pretty well all of them are dead now. And they never got below freezing, but I guess they don't like the cold. Uh, it, it did get down to, you know, just above freezing, maybe uh, three, four degrees Celsius. So just above freezing. And they didn't like that at all. They uh, began dying from the roots. You could see the roots starting to turn brown, a different color, and it started going up the trunks. I tried to save my largest one, the giant Kapok tree. I, uh, it was dying from the top down because it was getting fed nothing from the roots and turning brown from the roots up. So there was a section of it in the middle that was alive. So I took that as a cutting and I put it in a glass of water, hoping to keep it alive enough to root and, you know, keep the tree alive. But it's also not doing so well. So I'll show you an update to all the Kapok trees. And there's a bit of a happy ending to all this and I'll explain why. If I zoom down here, I've got that giant Kapok tree that I was growing in a glass of water. I don't know if you can see it in there. Right down there. And you can see there's only a small portion of it green. And all the branches, it started branching out. And I thought, well, you know, if the roots take in the glass of water, it'll stay alive and I can grow a new root system. But it's just not doing well. It seems to be just declining. So I'm not holding any promise for keeping that alive. And I'll show you my forest also. Here's my Kapok forest. And you can see they're all totally dead. Very unfortunate. Um, they, uh, the roots died first and it started turning brown at the base of the trunk. And the brown started coming up, climbing the trunk. The trunks were that green color with branches. And because the roots were dead, it just cut off the flow of nutrients to the top of the tree, and they just slowly went brown and died. You might wonder, after all that disaster, how can there be a happy ending? Well, I learned something. I learned that the Kapok trees can't survive low temperatures, so I would probably bring them indoors now. Um, I'm thinking anything below about... Uh, yeah, I don't know, um, probably 15 degrees Celsius. So when it starts getting cool out, I would bring them inside. They just don't like the cold. And like I said, these never froze these trees. Every other tree that was in the greenhouse did quite well. So it was only the Kapoks that just suffered from the cold. Uh, the other part of the happy ending is I gave a lot of my Kapok cuttings to Bonsai J who has his own YouTube channel. And so he has a lot of them. And I think he even propagated more cuttings off of the cuttings I gave him. And so he's going to give me some of them back and uh, so I can keep my Kapok trees going. So that's the happy ending. So not only did I learn something about the trees, but I'm going to get some of the original trees back and I can keep growing you know, my favorite tree in the whole world is the Kapok tree. They're not very good for bonsai, but they're a fantastic tree to see in nature. So I'm glad that 
I don't have to start all over from seed again. So thanks, Bonsai Jay. And he'll be coming over, I think, this Tuesday night to uh, have a tour of the plant room here and bring over the kapok trees. So that'll be really nice. The sun is just starting to set outside. If you can see it through the window here, you can see the glow of the setting sun. And it's been a busy day today. I couldn't take any video at CD Sunday because it's just full of people and I spent the whole day answering questions and talking to people and, you know, doing my presentation with the video and everything. I did bring my Larch Forest to CD Sunday on display at our table and it got a lot of attention. It brought people over to the table and got them talking about the community gardens and the community orchard and the First Nations garden and the edible forest. So it did its job, the large forest. I will be doing landscape work to the large forest in this video, but it'll have to wait for a couple of days until I get time to take the forest outside and you know work on the landscape. So that'll be coming up later in this video. Dome, Rogers Center. There we are, Union Station. Well, Jules, we're here. Let's go to the car show. <laughs> All
that was our trip to the 2020 Toronto International Car Show. We went on family day and I went with Julian and my older brother. Had a lot of fun. I was hoping to get outside today and finish the large forest, but our kind of mild winter weather turned really cold and I don't want to be out there in the greenhouse pruning the trees. It's gotten down to like minus 15. It's really cold outside. So I'm going to wait to prune the large forest up and to do that landscaping when it warms up a little bit more. Bonsai Jay and his son were over checking out the plant room and he brought me some kapok trees back. So I've got a nice group of kapoks to continue growing. In a previous video, I showed you this 3D printed bonsai pot that I modeled up and got printed. And today I have a new one. It's an oval shaped pot. I just printed out a small one to try it out and I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is here. It's a two piece pot. So the feet are molded into the bottom plate and then the edges of the pot are in the top plate. So I have to glue these two pieces together like that. And I'll post this file, the 3D pot file, onto Thingiverse also. So you can, you know, a free download if you want to print it out. And you can print these pots out any size. This is designed to be, to be printed out fairly large. It's got a very shallow lip on it. So this would be for a forest planting or a landscape planting. So you'd want to print it out, you know, as large as you kind of possibly can. So this pot at this size cost me $5.20 to print. These larger ones, this was almost $20, I think. So the more plastic you use, the more it costs. So I'm going to try and glue this together today. So I've got my, my crazy glue or what are this Gorilla Glue here. This is a super glue gel. Super glue, I guess is the name for it. So I'll try and get the cap off there and I'll put a dab on the paper make sure it's working there it is and now I'm going to try and glue it together uh, I hope I have enough time to line it all I guess I'll find out all right so here I go I'm going to kind of put it around the edges here Kind of run a bead around there. And I'll go around the holes a bit too. And that, that should do it. All right, here I go. So I'll try and line it up the best I can before I push down. About like that. And then I'll make sure it's all looking good because this will harden fairly quickly. It's looking really good. So I do have enough drying time to line it all. It's still moving around. And I haven't got it on my fingers yet, which is good. So I'm just kind of squeezing around the middle here making sure that glue's all thinned out, that I don't end up with a big gap where the glue joint is. It's looking quite good. I'm going to try a new technique for finishing today. This PLA plastic, if you try and sand it with sandpaper, it just kind of melts the top surface of the uh, plastic. And I've heard if you use a scraper like a razor blade or a sharp blade, you can smooth it that way. So I'm going to try that today, just to smooth out the edges. And I may even paint it, I may prime it. You know, you keep this brown color underneath your primer, so if it does chip the paint off, it doesn't look obvious that there's a different color underneath, so. Okay, that, that glued up really nicely. There's the pot. Now, I'm going to tackle the larger one also, because I never glued it. All right, so here I go with the larger one, and I'll do the same thing. I'll run a bead of glue around the edges here. There we go, it's running out. 
and hopefully I'll have the same amount of drying time so I can align it all and I'll go around my holes here if you don't glue around your holes you might get water kind of in between the two pieces of plastic and you might get problems so you want it sort of watertight sealed okay here I go I better put a little bit in the middle too oh my elastic just fell down I'll just put a bit in here to kind of reinforce it all. All right. Here I go. I'm going to try and align it the best I can. About there, kind of move it around a bit. Oh, I do see glue coming out the edges here, so I will have to be careful with my hands that I don't glue my fingers together. I'm going to move my light a bit here so I can see a bit better. Make sure I check both sides of the pot for alignment. That's looking good. And again, I'll, I'll try and do some finishing on this pot. And I'm going to try and put a finish on this pot so probably a maybe even a ceramic glaze or something kind of look to it it'll be done with paint but okay so that glued up quite nicely to finish the pots I'm going to use a scraper this is a scraper that's used for finishing the tops and backs of violins it's got all the curves and a scraper is just a hardened piece of steel and the edge is 90 degrees it's a very sharp corner and then you get a hardened steel rod and you roll that corner over so it kind of instead of a 90 degree corner it creates kind of a hook on the one surface so when you're running the scraper along a surface that hook acts like a little mini plane and it takes a fine shaving of wood off your violins and it'll do the same on this plastic so we'll try it out now and see how it works if you don't have a scraper, which I'm sure most people don't, you can use a, uh, a razor blade or an X-Acto knife, a hobby knife, and it should do the same thing. You just get the right angle on your blade and it should scrape a tiny layer off. So let's give it a try now. All right, so I've got my scraper and I'll... You can see the little shavings that come off. like that just feel a little bit of pull on the scraper and it doesn't take much off at a time it takes a really fine layer and we'll see what kind of surface finish I can get it is smoothing out so this pot it's an oval pot and the edges are slightly rounded on it. So instead of coming down, you know, from the lip to the base in a straight line, it has a slight curve to it. And I'll be making a, a lot of different varieties of these oval shaped pots in the future. So I'll take the same basic design and I'll maybe make a, a flat edge and then I'll put a lip on it, a little beaded lip and maybe some patterns along the bottom and just try some different variations of the same thing looking much nicer it's really smoothing it out nicely gets rid of all those 3d printed lines like the layer lines I'm going to try and do this top layer here too it's quite rough from the 3d printing I'll try smoothing that out so one of the reasons I printed this pot so small is I'm still making those uh, those benches like a miniature bonsai bench and I'll, I'll be putting all these miniaturized pots on them should look quite good I'll put the link to get to the Thingiverse file for this pot so you can print your own uh, in the description down below yeah it's doing a really good job 
I'll show you a close-up of what the surface looks like now. All right, here's the pot, and I'll try and move the lighting to kind of get the best angle down here. So it's getting quite smooth. If you look at the original, you can see all the, the rough texture from the 3D printing. And you can see on this one too, you can see all the, the horizontal line, layer lines. So. inside too. Yeah. So the scraper is doing a good job. I think it'll work well on this curve pot also. Yeah. Yeah, it works well on that curve pot also. My goal for these miniature pots is to, if, if I show a photo or a, a video of the pot by itself, you can't tell how large it is. So without, you know, any frame of reference to get the surface finished just right. So it looks like it could be a giant pot. You, you just don't know how large it is. So, so I'm trying to get the surface finished really good and that'll help with the illusion of scale. If you see those 3D printed lines, it'll just look like a 3D printed pot. But if I get it nice and smooth, it should look very convincing as a a larger pot shrunken down magically <laughs> i often when i'm looking through bonsai books and pictures online i'm i often wonder well, how big is that tree and sometimes i'm surprised that you know that they're they're as large as they are like i've seen pictures of ficus trees and i wonder how big is that tree and when i see an actual picture of the tree with a frame of reference sometimes they're huge they're like you know giant bonsai uh, other times I'm pleasantly surprised I see a picture and I think it's probably a large tree but it's actually a very small tree so I think you know that's where some of the skill of bonsai comes in is making something small look really large I finished scraping the pot up and it, it's looking really good I like it nice and shiny I'm going to give it a coat of primer now. Uh, I'll show you another pot that I painted last year, right here. And it's looking really good. That, that's the primer and I darkened the feet in. This one has that lip at the top and the bottom and straighter sides. You can see it's got a bit of the 3D printing surface texture in it, which kind of also looks like clay. It's, you know, if you're making this a clay, you'd you get a bit of surface texture also. So I'm going to paint this one also. And I, I may try putting a, you know, make it look like a glazed pot, keeping the feet brown under here, putting kind of a glaze on it. I'll see. All right, I'll get the paint open. This is a red oxide primer. It's a flat color. It's about as close as you can get to that kind of reddish clay color without mixing up a custom color. A little bit old this paint, but it'll work. All right, here I go. I'll put on my first layer. Oh, brushes on really nicely. These primers are designed to fill in cracks and pores in, uh, you know, bodywork or anything. So it helps fill in all the seams. 3D printing lines and it can be sanded after too to get even a better finish. I think you know because this one is so smooth on the sides I think it would be a good idea to go for that kind of glossy finish on the on the pot. So what I'll do is I'll paint this layer of primer on the pot then I'll sand it and then I'll put a second layer of primer on until I get it really nice and smooth. Get in all my holes. Okay, now I can flip the pot over and do the inside here. I think that's done. 
I stopped for supper and when I got back, I thought the pot would be dry, the paint on it, but it's not, it's still wet. So I'll have to let that probably dry overnight. So I'll go on to this pot, scraping it down and I'll get a layer of primer on that. And then we'll have to come back and finish these pots in part three. And hopefully the temperature outside will get warmer and I can work on the larch forest. It's time now for today's update. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We're out at the community orchard for an update and they've started taking down some of the dead trees, the ash trees in this part of the forest. Today they're taking down about 50 dead trees and the work will continue later on in the year. back after they finished working and we'll check out what the forest looks like. I'll keep working away at the pots and I hope to see you in part three. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>